This viscast will use Ohm's law to look at the properties of a small electric motor. You might want to pause the video now to read through the question carefully. To start our solution, let's make sure we can interpret what the question is actually asking. So we have a small motor and we know that there is a potential difference across that motor from a battery of 12 volts. We also know that 12 volts is causing a current of 320 milliamps to flow through the motor. And we also know something about the power produced, but this is mechanical power. And the question is asking us to find the resistance of the motor and the efficiency of the motor. And we'll have to think a little bit about what was meant by that efficiency. So in our interpret stage here, we're clearly going to have to relate the potential difference, the current, and the resistance that are properties of this motor. And so that will, of course, require us to consider Ohm's law. We also have to think about the efficiency, and efficiency that we're talking about here will relate to the power that we're getting mechanically out of this motor versus the electrical power that the motor might be consuming. Moving on to the development stage, let's consider a diagram here where we have a battery connected to our motor here and that's really all we know about our circuit. We know we've got 12 volts of potential difference on our battery. We know we have a, a current in here that we know how, how large that is and we know that this motor here is basically behaving as far as our concerns are here as a resistor. It's, it's providing some resistance to the current flowing from this 12 volt potential difference. So we'll recall Ohm's law gives us a relationship between voltage current and resistance. And because we're concerned with power as well, we might remember that we can write the electrical power here as a voltage times a current. And indeed, there's a few ways of writing this. We could rearrange using Ohm's law. Instead of writing I, we could write V divided by R, and this would also become V squared divided by R. Let's move on to the evaluation step in our solution here. In our evaluation step for part A, we really just need to use Ohm's law, in this case to find the resistance, that's what the question is asking, and we know the potential difference and the current. So we just need to rearrange this equation. So if I want to get the resistance by itself, I simply need to divide both sides by the current, and so I'll have V divided by I, and so my potential difference here is 12 volts. The current, I'm told, is 320 milliamps, so I need to make sure I use SI units to get my units to fall out correctly. And when I do that calculation, I will get 37.5, and that will be in units of ohms. And that's the resistance of the motor. For the second part of this problem, where I need to think about the motor's efficiency, I know it's producing 1.6 watts of mechanical power, but how much electrical power is it consuming to produce that mechanical power? Again, I can use my fairly simple relationship here that the power is the voltage times the current. In this case, it will be 12 volts multiplied by my 320 milliamps, which we could always write as 0 0.320. That's now in amps. And when I multiply that together, I, I get an answer there of 3.8 watts. And that, as you can see, is, is a larger power than the power that the motor produces mechanically. And of course, that's what I anticipate. I certainly can't produce more mechanical power than the electrical power that I'm consuming in my motor. So for an efficiency here, I might think about what fraction of the power that I'm consuming gets converted into usable mechanical power. So I might write here that would be I'm getting 1.6 watts of my 3.8 watts that I'm consuming, and that comes out to be 0.42 which I might write as 42%. The efficiency of this motor is it converts 42% of the electrical power it draws into useful mechanical power. And that's actually not a completely unusual result. There will be some, some mechanical losses in the system here. There will be some friction in the motor um, and some conversion losses along the way. So that 
um, is not an unrealistic figure for an actual motor. Let's just do, to finish here, a quick step for the assessment. Uh, I could go through and check the units, but in fact the units are all fairly straightforward here in that the ohm, for example, is defined as a volt per ampere. And so this ohm's law, as long as I've got it the right way around, which I have made sure that I've done the algebra correctly, um, the definition of my ohm basically tells me that my units are correct here. But one thing that I can do is I can think about, because I've got more than one way of, of using these, these various quantities, I could think, what if I, if I knew that my power, if I calculated it correctly, at 3.8 watts, that's the electrical power that was consumed, and I know that I've got a voltage of 12 volts here, I can actually use those two to see a direct calculation of the resistance. So I can now say, well, if power equals V squared over R, then I could find that my resistance here will be V squared over P, and I can put those values in 12 squared divided by 3.8. Remember that 3.8 was what I calculated, and if I do that, not surprisingly, I actually do get 38 ohms, which agrees with my initial uh, calculation. So sometimes a good assessment step in problems like these can be to try and do the calculation, kind of a reverse calculation, a different way, and see if your answers are indeed consistent.